This video was brought to you by CuriosityStream. For the last couple of months, Kosovo and Serbia have been sparring over a new law requiring ethnic Serbs in northern Kosovo to use Kosovan license plates. Tensions flared in August when the new law was supposed to come into force, but the Kosovo authorities eventually backed down and agreed to delay its implementation. It looks like things would calm down when the EU brokered an uneasy deal at the end of November, which banned Kosovo from issuing fines to people who refused to swap the plates, and banned Serbia from issuing registrations with the initials of towns in Kosovo. But in the last week or so, tensions have flared up once again. So in this video, we're going to look at the renewed unrest, what's triggered it, and the prospects for some sort of settlement. So before we get into the most recent events, a bit of context. Tensions between Serbia and Kosovo have been tense since Kosovo declared independence in 2008, and Serbia doesn't even recognise Kosovo as an independent state. The two countries were part of Yugoslavia until the 90s, when an economic slowdown and the rise of Serbian nationalist Slobodan Milosevic triggered its breakup. During the Kosovo War in the late 90s, NATO ended up intervening decisively in favour of Kosovan separatists, despite never receiving authorization from the UN, and Milosevic eventually agreed to withdraw all federal forces for Kosovo. Since then, NATO has maintained a peacekeeping force in the region, commonly known as the KFOR, which today consists of about 3,500 NATO troops. Anyway, the war ended with Kosovo being placed under UN supervision, and in February 2008, Kosovo declared independence, with 109 out of the 120 members of the Assembly of Kosovo voting to secede from Serbia. Now, while the declaration was deemed illegal under the Serbian constitution, it was approved by the International Court of Justice, and the Republic of Kosovo was subsequently recognised by a majority of European Union countries and the United States. This didn't go down well with either Serbia, which doesn't recognise Kosovo's independence, or the ethnic Serbs living in Kosovo, who represent about 8% of the population and mostly live in northern Kosovo near the Serbian border. Ethnic Serbs have regularly protested against efforts by Kosovan authorities to assert their jurisdiction in the region, and they weren't happy when Kosovan authorities first tried to ban Serbian licence plates in September of last year. According to the BBC, some 50,000 ethnic Serbs living in the region use license plates issued by Serbian authorities, and refuse to recognise Kosovan institutions. The Kosovan authorities temporarily backed down, but tried again in July, prompting another angry reaction from ethnic Serbs. Again, Kosovan authorities backed down, but said they'd try again in 30 days, which didn't go down well with the ethnic Serbs. Anticipating another conflict, the EU started negotiating a deal between the two sides, which was eventually agreed in late November. According to Josep Borrell, Serbia agreed to stop issuing license plates with Kosovan cities' denominations, and Kosovo agreed to stop trying to implement the license plate law. Now, while any deal is better than no deal, seasoned Balkan watchers were sceptical that this would be the end to it. For starters, the EU doesn't have a great track record here. There have been loads of agreements in the past, and none of them have conclusively resolved the issue. Second, the deal only addressed the question of fines for license plates, and not all the other accompanying issues. For example, ethnic Serbs have set up blockades around northern Kosovo in protest, which are still ongoing, and have complained about what they perceive as intimidation by ethnic Albanian Kosovo police. The Kosovo government claims that more police are needed in northern Kosovo to quell the ongoing unrest, and they don't have any ethnically Serb police anymore because most of the ethnic Serbs in the Kosovo police force quit in protest at the license plate law back in early November. These ethnic Serb police were originally replaced by the EU's mission in Kosovo, known as EU LEX, but they failed to stem the unrest, and ethnically Albanian Kosovo police have apparently got involved. This might not sound controversial, but according to both Kosovo's constitution and the Brussels Agreement, the police force in northern Kosovo is supposed to be majority Serb to reflect the ethnic constitution of the region. Tensions escalated over the weekend after the Kosovo authorities sent some 200 ethnically Albanian Kosovan police into the region, accompanied by armoured vehicles, who promptly arrested an ethnically Serbian former police officer, apparently on suspicion of terrorism. 
On Saturday, there were multiple shootouts between Kosovan police and ethnic Serbs. And in Serbia, there were marches in support of ethnic Serbs in Kosovo, with protesters waving Serbian and Russian flags, chanting Serbia is Kosovo and F*** NATO. The following day, ethnic Serbs set up barricades on the roads connecting northern Kosovo to the rest of Kosovo. In response to the new bout of unrest, Serbia's president, Aleksandar Vucic, announced that Serbia would request to send Serbian military and police into Kosovo, claiming that his actions were sanctioned by UN Security Council Resolution 1244. UNSC 1244 was passed in June 1999, in the aftermath of the Kosovo War, and it states that a, quote, agreed number of Serb military and police personnel are permitted to return to Kosovo to perform the functions in accordance with Annex 2. At time of writing, Vucic is yet to actually send his request to the KFOR. He said he'll formally apply to send in troops on Thursday, but he'll probably argue that Serbian troops are required to guarantee ethnic Serbs a safe environment as provided for in Annex 2. So what happens next? Well, an immediate conflict looks unlikely. There's basically zero chance that KFOR will agree to Vucic's request, and he'd be mad to send in troops given that, well, Kosovo hosts NATO's largest military presence. Nonetheless, the tensions show no signs of subsiding, and this is pretty bad news. Before the war in Ukraine, Serbia-Kosovo relations were steadily improving, largely thanks to the EU, who have spent over a decade facilitating dialogue between the two sides. However, in part because Putin's invasion of Ukraine has exacerbated tensions by reigniting anti-NATO sentiment in Serbia, relations have deteriorated recently. Anti-NATO and anti-Kosovo protests are continuing in Serbia, and Vucic, himself a Serbian nationalist of sorts, is now under political pressure to escalate. Things won't have been helped by Kosovo's decision to apply for EU membership yesterday, which comes just a few months after they applied to join NATO. Neither organisation is likely to let Kosovo in any time soon, at least not until they normalise relations with Serbia. But Kosovo's application puts pressure on the West to essentially choose between Kosovo and Serbia. For context, Serbia has been in negotiations to join the EU since 2009, and was previously expected to join sometime in the mid-2020s. Kosovo's application obviously complicates things, and makes a compromise less likely. But anyway, you get the idea. While an immediate conflict looks unlikely, things are only going downhill. And that's obviously bad news. Good news, though, is that Nebula is on a big sale at the moment. You've heard me tell you about Nebula before, but there's a big sale on right now. So if you've ever considered signing up, now's the time. Essentially, though, Nebula is the streaming service we built with a bunch of your other favourite creators. Over there, we've posted a bunch of exclusive full-length TLDR videos which will never come to YouTube. But you'll also find a load of our normal videos early and ad-free there too. As I said, it's not just us either, there's tons of other amazing creators too, which makes it astonishing you can get all of this exclusive and ad-free content for less than one dollar a month. Normally, people sell you things as being less than a cup of coffee. This is less than a bottle of water and a fraction of what other streaming services are charging. Services which don't directly support independent creators. This crazy good offer is only available right now, and it's only possible through our Nebula Curiosity Stream bundle. Essentially, if you sign up to Curiosity Stream for the crazy low price of $11.59 a year, then you get free access to Nebula as long as you're a member. That's right, two platforms for less than a dollar a month. And Curiosity Stream is awesome. It contains absolutely boatloads of high quality documentaries on all kinds of topics I know TLDR viewers will love. So if you want both for less than a dollar a month, then the link's down below. And if you've ever considered signing up to support TLDR, now's the cheapest time to do so. So thank you.